with you that is uh, 28 uh, years old uh, uh, lady a bank employee the previous girl about 3 years old was normal this time she comes for a fetal echo at 20 weeks of gestation and basically the uh, reason for referral was uh, cardiomegaly and you know ventricular dysfunction and somebody thought that this is uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome let's go through the case one by one you know if you notice here carefully you notice there is a systolic and diastolic flow reversal in aorta what do we mean by systolic and diastolic flow this is the pulmonary artery the flow is forward this is the aorta the flow is retrograde now if you notice carefully this is one frame where uh, the flow in pulmonary artery is forward that is systole and there is a flow backward into the aorta but this is diastole when pulmonary artery has no flow but still the flow continues in aorta so that means there is both systolic and diastolic flow reversal in aorta let's move ahead and see what we have further four chamber view is showing a markedly reduced contractility and a dilatation and globular structure of um, an lv and this la also is enlarged our right ventricle also is mildly dysfunctional and hypokinetic this and the mitral valve doesn't seem to open too well let's go ahead and see something else now we have an lv which is poor and i, I expected on the previous uh, four chamber view that L aorta would be small that's why we would have an lv which is bad and should be a hypoplastic left heart or critical aortic stenosis but lv to my surprise the aorta was normal so normal aorta poorly contractile uh, lv what is going on okay let's see this you have an aorta and you see aorta is looking fine in the four chamber view but lv is hypocontractile and uh, the mitral valve is not opening here i show you a uh, try uh, uh, the mitral regurgitation which is both systolic and diastolic it's continuous flow notice a continuous flow of the mitral regurgitation and do make a man notice that this mitral this is the mitral regurgitation jet what you have and you see that there is a uh, the flow reversal in fossa the four fossa through fossa the flow is going into uh, the right atrium okay so mr systolic and diastolic flow reversal in the fossa valis still we don't know what is going on to notice here there is an aortic regurgitation and that was the reason for continuous flow retrograde flow of in the in, in the aorta from pulmonary artery what was happening in the three vessel view was as the lv was unable to uh, eject blood into the aorta the pressure was low and that's why there was a flow reversal in the arch and, and the ascending aorta in systole there was aortic regurgitation and that's why there was a diastolic flow reversal also so it was systolic and diastolic now we find the reason of a diastolic flow reversal is aortic regurgitation into the left ventricle we still do not know what the pathology is but what do we have as of now we have that there is a flow reversal in aorta there is an adequate size of aorta which is you know difficult to explain bad lv dysfunctional mitral valve i would have expected if the mitral valve is bad there is no flow across it the lv should be small and if the lv is bad lv is large i expected the aorta to be small both the things are not happening so there is a reversal of the flow from the fossa so what is the pathology is that the lv dysfunction first with his aortic atresia doesn't fit in the aorta size is normal mitral dysplasia i mean that also there is mitral regurgitation la size is normal there's something going on somewhere so now let's see you know what do we have here this is the the aortic regurgitation jet you see in lv and that's continuous that is a continuous flow on an m mode you see the continuous reversal of flow across the aortic valve which is what which is aortic regurgitation again aortic regurgitation is both systolic and diastolic I'm going to tell you how can you get a systolic aortic regurgitation. PA pressure, okay, I think I have that in a subsequent uh, slide I would share with you. Now, we did an M mode, I recognize the problem. 
and we did an m mode to show the mitral valve was the the aortic valve was moving normally that is the m mode of the aortic valve you see the aortic valve box like thing it was opening normally so the aortic valve was opening okay so if aortic valve was opening okay where was the problem now you look at carefully the problem was in sub aortic region we had a sub aortic membrane in this patient which was causing a severe obstruction to left ventricular outflow tract so that was behaving like what aortic stenosis yes so we have seen a membrane in in a neonatal and a pediatric population you see a membrane here and this is below the aortic valve and you see uh, uh, on the other side you see there is the flow acceleration at the membrane and this jet of cross the membrane is high velocity hits the aortic valve damages the aortic valve and produces aortic regurgitation let's sum up the entire thing together so what do we have here we have uh, aortic uh, sub aortic membrane we have that led to severe stenosis which led to lv dysfunction done which led to severe mr that led to reversed flow in the fossa then because of the severe mr the this reduced forward flow through the left ventricle that means there was a reduced left ventricle outflow and that caused a reversal of flow in the aorta there was a aortic regurgitation because of the damage of the aortic valve this led to flow reversal both in systole and diastole i hope you like this case this was something very very unusual and it's pathological or uh, what i say that hemodynamic uh, dissection uh, would be very useful